Don't you hate it when you're at work and one of your colleagues calls in sick claiming to have food poisoning? Despite the fact that you knew they were trying to get that shift taken since last week, you wish them good health and get back to your job. You have no sympathy for your coworker. Either they're lying about being sick or they're stuck in their bathroom all day while you need to work twice as hard to make up for their absence. And anyway, it's just food poisoning. They'll be better by tomorrow, right? Today's topic will be covering some food-related illnesses. As with all things medical, we recommend speaking with your doctor if you have any concerns. We will also show images of certain illnesses, so be prepared to see some yucky material. And with that out of the way, let's get into it. Take a look at this image of a nice, healthy human brain, and compare it to this one. Oh God, what made those holes? More like, what made those homes, huh? A study done in the New England Journal of Medicine by Nishanth Dev, MD, chronicling the story of an 18-year-old man who arrived at the hospital with tonic-clonic seizures. Tonic seizures are when your muscles contract or stiffen violently, and clonic seizures are when one or more muscles twitch repeatedly. Tonic-clonic seizures are, as you can probably guess, a combination of both. The man also complained of pain in his right groin for about a week prior. When he was examined by doctors, he appeared confused and had major swelling over his right eye. Medical staff then performed an MRI on his head and found this. Another report from the first affiliated hospital of Zhejiang University tells the tale of a 46-year-old construction worker, nicknamed Chu by the Chinese researchers to protect his identity, who arrived suffering seizures and headaches. He was taken to the hospital after his co-workers found him collapsed on the job during a seizure and told medical staff that each night for about a month he had been experiencing seizures as if he had epilepsy. Doctors quickly ordered up a CT scan where they found multiple intracranial calcifications, calcium buildup in brain tissue, and leaving on the inside of his skull. Chu, not wanting to spend any more money, declined further medical care and returned home. Symptoms didn't fade, so he returned to the hospital for an MRI, at which point they found more of those fun little speckles all over his brain. Those little white dots are cysts, a condition known as neurocystisercosis when they cover brain tissue. Cysts are little bags of tissue filled with air, liquid, or other substances. The doctors gave out anti-inflammatory and anti-seizure medications for our first two cases, but sadly our victim died in the hospital two weeks later. Chu, however, pulled through after the removal of the cysts and pressure reduction from within his skull. Rachel Palma of Middletown, New York was experiencing hallucinations, involuntary movements, and found herself suddenly not understanding the concepts of time in space. She says that she was no longer able to process the fact that a key opens the door. The computer screen looked completely different. It was almost foreign. She went to and from the emergency room at least 10 times, but medical staff couldn't figure out what was wrong with her. Eventually, Palma's GP noticed a lesion on her left frontal lobe and directed her to a neurosurgeon by the name of Dr. Jonathan Rasuli. She arrived at his office for a biopsy of the lesion, fully expecting a diagnosis of brain cancer. She says, I was told that it was most likely a malignant tumor which would require radiation and chemo even after the surgery. Rasuli, during the surgery, noticed that the lesion looked like a quail egg. Same size, same look, same firmness. Which, disturbingly enough, was clearly not a brain tumor. Rasuli says that brain tumors are very soft, very mushy, they're not very well defined, they're infiltrative and it's difficult to get completely around them. So not small and round like what was found in Palma's brain. If it wasn't a tumor, then what was it? And what does she have in common with Chu and our other victim? Those cysts, those little white spots, Put it away. are the homes of the larvae of what's known as the pork tapeworm, or Tania solium, a species of tapeworm commonly found in undercooked pork products. Until the tapeworms have laid eggs in your body and they begin to infect your tissue, it's nigh impossible for us to know that they're inside us. The worst symptoms of pork tapeworms emerge after those little wormy babies have already gotten into our brains. They include a buildup of liquid in the cranial cavity, a distinct change in behavior, muscle and nerve impairment, and seizures. Palma and our first victim had no recollection of consuming uncooked pork, but Chu told reporters that he had eaten pork in a hot pot before he felt sick. He said that, I only simmered the meat a little. The bottom of the pot with the spicy broth was red, so you couldn't see if the meat had been cooked thoroughly. 
All foodborne illnesses suck super hard, and even if your body can fight off these little guys, you're still gonna be a frequent flyer on Air Upchuck. And poop your pants railways. Oh, nice. But what about pork makes it so prone to parasites? And how can we protect ourselves from all foodborne illnesses? Technically, all uncooked meat carries some danger. If beef, for example, is going to be contaminated, it's not inside the meat. Dr. Lee Ann Jacobs, professor of food science at North Carolina State University, explains that anything harmful lives on the surface of the meat, not inside the muscle. So if you like your steaks very rare, just searing the outside will likely kill anything harmful. But when meat is ground, any bacteria on the surface mixes throughout the product, so it must be cooked thoroughly. Chicken has a higher risk of malevolent microbiota than beef because they're usually raised in extremely tight conditions and are produced in a massive scale. Chicken meat is also much moister than other meats, which allow microbes to permeate the entire structure, so they must be cooked thoroughly. Fish, like pork, has a chance of being fouled with parasites, so cooking it is the best way to keep yourself safe. However, you can kill off those parasites by keeping fish at a temperature below negative 4 degrees Celsius for a week. Regulations on how fish are intended to be eaten raw vary though. The United States Food and Drug Administration recommends that fish be frozen before eaten raw, but there aren't specific federally enforced laws on the matter. Most restaurants will prioritize their freshest and safest fish for raw consumption because giving their customers parasites is bad for business. The reason you want to cook your pork all the way through, even when it isn't ground, is because it's not just bacteria we're worried about. We're also trying to kill off those parasites, which will burrow into into the muscle. Why is pork more dangerous than beef? Well, it's simply evolution. There are more species of parasites endemic to pork than there are to beef. Hey, remember the brain worms? The number of cases per year in the United States has decreased dramatically since the mid 20th century. Between 2008 and 2012, only 15 cases were reported. The American CDC claims that the reason for this drop in reports stems from more stringent regulations on what we can feed to hogs, aka not raw meat garbage, more widely available commercial and home refrigeration, and better public education on the dangers of consuming raw meats. The symptoms of tapeworm infections are usually pretty mild or non-existent. Sometimes it will be followed with digestive problems, including pain in the abdomen, loss of appetite, and weight loss. Cystocercosis, when the worms begin laying eggs, can be recognized by muscle spasms, blurry vision, and confusion, depending on where the cysts are located. At the end of the day, any meat you consume will come with it a small chance of contamination. The best way for us to keep ourselves safe from tapeworms, roundworms, or any kind of worms is to cook meat thoroughly to at least an internal temperature of 70 degrees Celsius or 160 degrees Fahrenheit. If you do insist on eating your food raw, just make sure you get your food from reliable suppliers. No! Ah, put it away! Ah, Stop ah. it, bro! You're scaring him! I, I wasn't scared. I'm not sure if I ever want to eat meat again. Ever, ever? Ever, never, ever. That seems like an overreaction. If you cook meat properly, you're fine. But we can change the topic if you'd like. Yes! Yeah! Did you know that KFC was originally a gas station chicken recipe? You mean like in those in those takeout containers? And did you know that his entire kitchen was basically inside the trunk of his car? Yeah, was the back seat the dining area? Our friends at Hook have made a video a bit more appetizing than ours. Check it out here. Damn it, now I want a bucket of chicken. God, I wish we weren't stuck inside. Delivery? Hey, my boy, now there's an idea. 